Today we're visiting Spain to learn about their organic red wines with super wine girl Angela Aiello. Good morning. Good morning, Bob. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Okay, so there's two uh, grapes from this region. Uh, tell me if I'm screwing up the pronunciation. It's a uh, Garnacha <laughs> and Monastrel. Yes, these are two indigenous red grapes that are really grown not very, very else in the world, really, to be honest. Garnacha grows a little bit in the south of France, and it's sprinkled around the world, but Spain holds the most of it. And for Monastrel, actually, the region of Murcia, which is the southeast uh, region in Spain, has most Monastrel of the world. So two very interesting indigenous grapes, and, and actually, they're both blended into this wine in front of me. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and how do they differ from uh, each other? The okay, so Garnacha, Garnacha is really interesting. It actually is very similar to a Pinot Noir grape. So if you know Pinot Noir, you know Pinot Noir, you know Pinot Blanc, and you know Pinot Gris. Garnacha is the same way. It's Garnacha Blanc, Garnacha Rouge, and Garnacha Gris. And so we have thinner skins, much like a Pinot Noir. It is a softer style wine, low in tannin. There's a sweetness of fruit that comes through as well. And it, I mean, it's an easy to love style. I actually went to Spain and to France to learn about Garnacha in both places for a week-long expedition. Yeah, and it you was have some beautiful trip. photos. <laughs> yeah, it's really quite a wonderful place. And so they actually grow on bush vines. And, uh, you know, I think most of the time when we visit wine country, you look at uh, trained systems or trained vineyards, and these are very wild, like bush vines. And so the grapes actually grow in clusters inside the wild bush vines. And these tend to be 30 to 40 years old. So you get smaller berries, more concentrated in fruit, uh, and hand-tended. So, you know, always by hand. So are the wines more complex from these older vines? Definitely. So when you get to older vines, you get smaller berries, more complex juice, and uh, you tend to sometimes pay more for them and sometimes not. It's really just about finding a yeah. great bottle of wine. I mean, yeah. this wine's $11. Those descriptions... Sound like uh, some pretty nice, the blends, you know, uh, sound mm. pretty interesting. Well, it's like bringing out the both and right. bringing out the best in both, right? So the Monastrel grape is a little opposite to the Garnacha. It has thicker skins. Um, it, there's more color and tannin that come out. And and so you get these both of these kind of nicely balanced in here. And usually on a wine label, which you'll see at the front or the back, the very first grape that they list is always the majority grape. So, for instance, we have here, you know, more Garnacha than Monastrel. This is the 2020 vintage. Um, and I also love this back label because it tells you a lot about what's going on in the wine. And I'm finding this a lot with uh, wines in general. And, in fact, Spain has the largest, biggest, the biggest surface area of organic vineyards in the world. And so if you like to sip organic, Spain's the place for you to really go. And this Ornero Vera is very delicious. But this wine has everything on the back that you really would need to know about it. It talks about it being organic vegan, that it's from a sense of place, um, from the Murcia region, so very cool. When you were showing those pictures, um, it kind of reminded me of the uh, Sedona region. I don't know if that's accurate mm -hmm. or fair to compare. Did, w were there any similarities? Well, I think that, you know, the nice thing about the Murcia region of Spain is it does have a Mediterranean climate, very rare in its climate. Um, so it, it's only like 1%, I think, of the world's climate is Mediterranean, so mm -hmm. very, very rare. Yeah. So you've got the, obviously, the ocean coming in you've got these hot arid temperatures which makes it very great for wine growing and i mean then making a, a wonderful wine and i have two glasses here i'm wondering which is your favorite if you prefer the stem uh, i think or the, the one in your left, left hand this one the stemmed one yeah yeah <laughs> perfect and what do we pour pair with before glass? we uh, wrap up we got a minute left yeah Absolutely. So, I mean, these wines are very supple and juicy, but they have sort of medium to full body tannins. Mm -hmm. So this would also go really nice with a grilled lamb rack as the weather starts to get a little better here. And we're opening up our barbecues. You could do ribeye. You could also do even a pork tenderloin grilled with that little bit of char on it, too. Yeah. But it is very juicy. You could even pair it with a charcuterie board if you really wanted to. Now, um, you, you mentioned expensive. It's a higher price point or for some of the choices from that region? Uh, the these wines are so affordable. This is probably one of my best value wines that you could have right yeah. now at the LCBO. It's $11. Oh. And I, I love this wine. Yeah, this yeah. is great. Yeah. Who doesn't love value? <laughs> okay. Well, some great choices. That's a great glass, too. <laughs> <laughs> we can Make share sure that one together. A nice, a nice big glass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got, you got all day to finish that. But thanks for getting up early and joining us on Morning Live. Super wine girl, Angela Aiello. We'll link up your socials at chh.com for more great wine picks.